everybody welcome to my channel today we are going to diy our focal images to fit on a larger page i'm working on a 9 by 12 canson mixed media page i've taken it off the coil and i've given it a coat of gesso now i know that there is red in the focal image that i have chosen to create so i'm going across the color wheel to the teals and greens because I know that's going to work really well together. So I'm using Prussian blue, that's the dark blue, and yellow green. And when they mix, they make more of a green color. And I'm just putting this on, developing a base color, a base coat. I don't care that it is looking messy, that's just going to add texture. What I want to do here is create a background that resembles a Christmas tree. And I found that using Prussian blue with the greens really works well. To have that little bit of blue in there, sometimes even adding a little bit of red in really makes it pop. So I'm just applying the paint on top of the gessoed surface, that just helps the paint go on a little smoother, a little easier, doesn't soak into the paper as much. And I wanna keep some high, some dark, some light areas. The more variation, the better. So this is a big wreath stencil from the Crafters Workshop. I've had this forever. And even though it's a wreath, what I'm using it for is the foliage. So here I've taken a baby wipe and I'm just moving the stencil around and removing some of the paint through the stencil. This gives those lighter areas. I want to build up lots of texture. When you look at a Christmas tree, there's lots of layers, branches that are closer, branches that are further away, the, the texture of the needles. And I just want to duplicate that. And I'm going to do that by layering this stencil and then layering a stamp as well coming up. And just FYI, there is a bonus make in this video. I will also be making a five by seven card using the part of the same focal image, just to give you options. I'm using white gesso here and just Primarily, I'm targeting the darker blue areas or the areas that turned green by mixing the paint. So we remove some paint through the stencil to get one layer. Now we're adding white gesso, which is not quite as opaque, and then we're going to be adding some colors as well. Adding the white here kind of gives it highlights in the tree. Remember, my goal here is to make this look like a Christmas tree. Now I'm taking the Prussian blue and I am adding another layer, but I'm using the same stencil. You can get some wonderfully, wonderful layered effects by doing that. Keep one stencil and use different colors. And really, I'm only using white, the Prussian blue. That's it. And now, and when I stamp, I'm going to use black in a minute. But because some areas I'm pressing I'm putting more paint, some I'm giving less. It also gives variation. So at this point, my background was a little bit brighter than what I wanted. And the focal image that I was, one of the focal image, the napkin that I was going to use, wasn't quite, it had a different shade of green in it, so I couldn't use it. So I had to 
pivot and change what I used to make it match my background. But while I was making that decision, I was just shading around the edge with black acrylic paint. And often I do this at this stage when I'm unsure about what to do next or when I'm just trying to solve whatever problem is in front of me. Because you got to respond to what's happened on the page. I have this foliage cube. I believe it's Stampendous, and I love this. And I'm going to use this part of it, and I'm putting on fluid acrylic paint from Liquitex. It's something that is carried at Michael's, and it works really well on stamps. I like using acrylic paint as stamps, but this the fluid is, of course, thinner than the medium-bodied paint. And I find that it works really well for stamping. Now, I'm, the reason I'm adding the black here is because it was a little bit too bright in my mind. I want, and I wanted to add more texture, more layers. And I wanted something a little bit smaller scale than the big wreath stenciling. This also grunged it up a little bit, and I love that. Clean your stamps when you've put acrylic paint on them. That'll keep them clean. So this napkin comes from Ninny's Napkins. There's a link in the description box. This is called Catmus. And these cute, adorable cats are part of it. So I just used my, wa my brush with water to water cut it roughly. And now I'm going in to water cut it closer to the image. I don't want all this excessive napkin. This part of the napkin, I am going to combine with a part from a magazine and something from my scrap pile to make my focal image. And that's why I say DIY focal image. And especially when you're working on a larger page, a nine by 12, I don't have any stamps that are that size. But one thing that we can do is combine magazines with printables, with napkins, and create our own focal image. So there are the cats. This is the magazine picture, and it had an ornament hanging, but I didn't like the, full, the image of that. So I am going to swap that out and make my own ornament using a napkin and some scrap paper. And I wasn't sure if I wanted this Christmas tree in here. Now that I've looked at it, I'm going to edit that out. I've got my Christmas tree in the background. It's not really necessary in this application. I keep a lot of lids and I use those as circle templates. So I've got a variety of lids, different sizes. So this one comes from a coffee can and I'm just going to use it. It's the right size and I'm going to cut out on a piece of scrap paper. This was a shipping document that I got when I got a bunch of stencils. So I'm just tracing it on there, cutting out my circle, and then I am going to decoupage the napkin on the white and turn the napkin and the white into an ornament that go, that's going to be held up by the magazine part. I'm using fluid matte medium to glue this down onto the white paper. This is just copy paper, nothing special. But the reason I'm gluing it onto white is I don't want to glue it onto the background the way it is because all that green and blue and patterning will come through on my cats and I really don't want that. I don't want to distort my picture. So I'm giving a good coat of the matte medium uh, underneath and on top and then I'm going to put that aside and let it dry.
So while that's drying, I am going to do a five by seven card. And I water cut another one from the Katniss napkin because there are four identical images. This one I've left the Christmas tree in the background and I think I'm gonna move it to this side. That way I can put the sentiment on the side. This is gonna be a Christmas card. I have um, several members of my family that all love, have cats. So I will be making several of these and mailing them out to the cat lovers in my family. And since I'm doing a multiple make, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. You don't have to have so many steps all the time. So once again, I am gluing this down with the fluid matte medium and I'm giving a coat on the card as well as the napkin. And if you're out wondering what, I made a little bit of an envelope and I put the card, the back of the card in there, that's to keep the card from getting dirty. I'm a very messy creator. So I need to help myself out by um, having an envelope to put it in. And that just keeps, keeps everything a little neater and tidier. I'm just giving this a good coat. And whenever you decoupage it down, I always find the napkin really brightens up the colors really come to life. So now, because I water cut around it and the background wasn't white, there's some darker spots here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some white gesso and I am covering that up. I don't want to see those that gray or the dark that's there. Then I'm using my angle brush and I'm giving a coat of gesso to the entire background. I am going to come and colorize this background. But first I just want to get rid of all these little bits. And I'm going to do the same thing with the ornament. And you can see there's a little bits of green there where I cut out the Christmas tree. There's a little bit of gray. And this is something that you're going to run into when the napkin isn't, the background of the napkin isn't white. And oftentimes I don't use the whole napkin when I'm creating. I just, I'm using the focal image or part of it. Right now I'm also wondering if I'm going to paint the ornament or leave it white. I do leave it white, but would you have painted it? I was thinking maybe I could paint it uh, Naples yellow. I don't know. I'm using gel medium to glue it down because now my focal images are a little bit thicker. This is the napkin and the copy paper. And I just find that the gel medium works better for that application. So I'm gluing down the ornament part and then over top of that goes the hand with the ribbon. Now this came from a cover of a magazine, so it's a little bit thicker and it's very glossy. And it really didn't take the gel medium very well. In fact, in the final pictures at the end of the video, you're gonna notice that it kind of is peeling off. I played around with my sentiments and I have meowy and bright. And I picked a font that was a little bit bolder and I bubble cut around it. That means to leave that white on. I find that white works really well with the white of the Christmas ornament and then the, the bling on my magazine hand. She's wearing a ring that's got some white on it. 
Now I'm taking my angle brush and I'm shading around my entire focal image. The three parts, the napkin, the hand from the magazine and the circle that makes up the ornament. I'm loving how my focal image using three different things has really filled this nine by 12 page. And I just keep working my around the area, adding the shading where I see fit. And the reason for the shading is that that's going to help it, the focal image sound out from the background. I'm even adding a little bit of shading on the napkins. And then I want to take off this tape that keeps everything off the angle so it gives me a straight edge. Now let's finish this card. I decided that I am going to make a blue background. So I have light blue permanent and I watered it down some and I'm putting some is a lot more straight out of the tube, some is very watered down. I want this mottled kind of look. I don't want it one tone. Even though I am only using one color. And again, I know blue is going to look really well with all those reds and oranges and yellows that are in that napkin focal. Now I'm taking a piece of saran wrap and squishing it and I'm getting these wrinkle marks. So it's adding a lot of texture to my background and pattern. Now the reason this works is because I had gesso underneath that. This won't work as much or as well if you have raw paper. And look at all that texture, just how simple is that? An easy way to fancy up the background without doing a lot of extra, extra work. Now I'm gonna splatter with gold because I love Christmas cards with gold on them. I like gold at any time. I'm just splattering that, that yellow, there's that yellow on that, on that one cat. Now I brought it into the background. It adds a little bit of extra pattern and layer to my background. And I typed out a couple of sentiments again. I went with a bold sentiment. And this one says, waiting for Santa Paws. And it looks like they're there by the tree waiting for Santa Paws. When I type out sentiments, I typically type out a whole page. I find, I go on Pinterest and I find them. I type out different ones in different fonts. And when I print it off and then I audition them on the page. Sometimes they fit, sometimes they look better or and make my final decision. And what I don't use just goes in my bin to be used for something else. But in this case, I know I'm going to be doing multiple cards like this. So. so on the inside, I decided I'm going to put this sentiment. Wishing you a furry, purry Christmas.
Now once it's all dry, I want to add some line work. So I'm putting some stitching and I'm using the Fluid Acrylic from Liquitex Basics with my liner brush. But you could use a Posca pen if you feel better with that. But I'm adding the stitching on the all the way around the card. And this really ties in with the bold black font that I have. And it's just another added detail. If I was doing multiples in one sitting, I would do kind of assembly line where I do all the water cutting of the napkin, all the gluing down of the napkin, all the gesso on the background, colorizing the background. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like my channel, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, select the option to be notified of upcoming videos, and leave a comment. All those things help YouTube understand that you like my channel and it helps me grow my channel. So there's the art journal page and there's the five by seven card. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, go get creative.